What is up everybody? This is your guy Cly, and welcome back to Budget Buys. And today, I'm going to be taking a look at yet another $5 gaming headset from Five Below. But before I get into this, I do want to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare, for making this video possible. And that might seem like a little bit of overkill due to the fact that I'm just reviewing a $5 gaming headset, but the fact of the matter is, Five Below recently started putting out more gaming gear, and I'm planning on covering a lot of that in future videos. For example, this headset is actually just one of three new gaming headsets I found in their stores, though it is the only one to call itself a gaming headset. Then there's the fact that they've been releasing updated versions of some of their $5 gaming gear, like this $5 headphone stand, and this $5 LED light-up mouse pad. And while I don't have a standalone video of the original versions of both of those, I did compare them to their $10 equivalents in the Booga line. And then there's the gaming monitor LED strip that I've been sitting on for a while now. So while this one item wasn't that expensive, Skillshare is making all of those other coming reviews possible. So more about that later on in the video. Now back on topic, today I'm going to be talking about this gaming headset from Vibe Gaming. You know, the same company that brought us this very disappointing set of Bluetooth gaming earbuds I reviewed a while back. Fortunately, this time the headset is wired instead of Bluetooth, so it's already got one point in its favor before I even take it out of the box. And speaking of the box, it claims that this headset has premium sound, a gaming design, an adjustable boom mic, and a PC adapter and aux input. And on the side, it mentions that it has a slim folding design, stereo sound quality, comfortable padded ear cushions, adjustable headband, a built-in microphone, a speaker size of 40 millimeters, a frequency response range of 20 to 20,000 hertz, a speaker impedance of 32 ohms, a plug type of 3.5 millimeters, a cord length of 4 feet, and it contains one set of headphones. Inside the box, what you receive is this set of headphones that folds up very nicely, which is something I can't say about some of the other Five Below gaming headsets I've reviewed, so yet another point in this headset's favor. And now if we unfold the headphones and take a closer look, you can see that they're actually a decent size and have an adjustable band, which means that even if you have a head as large as mine, they'll fit pretty comfortably. The ear pads have a decently squishable foam with a faux leather covering, which admittedly doesn't seem very absorbent. So if you're going to have a long gaming session, it might start to get a little uncomfortable. Also, the cups on these headphones do move around a bit, which makes it easier to find a comfortable fit. Now, inside the headband, it isn't actually padded. Instead, it has a bit of a rubberized finish on the inside, which is kind of interesting. I don't know how comfortable that will be over long gaming sessions, but it didn't get uncomfortable during all of my testing. As for the color of these headphones, in my case, I ended up getting standard forest camo. And while this isn't the only color that's available, the other one Five Below had was also camo. In that case, it was white, gray, black, winterized camo. Now onto the boom mic. Instead of being on a pivoting arm, they used a relatively stiff piece of wire with a plastic coating on the outside to hold the microphone in place. As for the microphone itself, Fortunately, it is inside of a plastic housing that has a very distinct shape, so it will be relatively easy to position it directly in front of your mouth and make sure it is facing you, unlike some of the other headsets I've reviewed in the past. Next up on the cable, we have a built-in volume control, which I love to see in headphones. I much prefer being able to adjust my volume on the headphones themselves as opposed to having to adjust things on my PC. As for how you're going to be connecting this headset to whatever device you're using it with, you're going to do so with a standard 3.5 millimeter audio jack. In this case, it is a TRRS connector or tip ring ring sleeve. And that means that that one connector is going to handle the audio for both the headphones as well as the microphone. And it's the same connector used in many computers, video game consoles, and even smartphones. Well, it used to be in many smartphones. These days you may need to get an adapter to connect a standard set of headphones to your mobile device, so keep that in mind. 
Also, if your gaming platform of choice actually has two separate audio jacks, one for the microphone and one for the headphones, Vibe Gaming was kind enough to include an adapter that actually splits the headphone signal from the microphone signal. All you have to do is put the proper plug in the proper port. In this case, the green plug is going to be the headphones and the red plug is going to be the microphone. With all of the features out of the way, let's move on to the audio test using a new toy that I just made. I recently bodged together this binaural microphone and hopefully I'll be able to pick up the audio from the headphones with this and you can see what it sounds like. Well, what it sounds like after being passed through my editing software, YouTube, and then your headphones. But first, a word from our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. While there are a ton of different topics to choose from on Skillshare, personally, I've been doing a deep dive into video production with a side order of product photography due to my style of content. And one of the classes that was part of that deep dive recently is low light photography, settings and tips to capture the dark by Maria Jose Gouveia. And the reason I was specifically focusing on low light photography this time was due to the fact that I've been reviewing products that put a lot of emphasis on the fact that they have LEDs, be they gaming keyboards, mice, or even just LED strips. And my standard lighting setup tends to wash those out and you lose a lot of the punch that doesn't make for a clickable thumbnail. Fortunately, this class goes into a lot of detail about the different camera settings you're going to want to use in such situations. Though, admittedly, the cameras talked about in this class are a lot more expensive than what I have on hand. Heck, my camera doesn't even have interchangeable lenses. However, it does give me manual control over a lot of the settings covered, so this class is pointing me in the right direction. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will receive a one-month free trial to Skillshare Premium so you can start exploring your creativity. And this is what the microphone on the Vibe Gaming Gaming headset sounds like. It's not the best microphone in the world, but it sounds pretty dang decent for one that comes on a $5 gaming headset. It also sounds a lot richer than some of the gaming headsets I've reviewed in the past. It's also extremely sensitive. I had to crank my computer's audio capture all the way down to 5%. One last thing I want to mention is that this is an analog microphone, so the audio quality is going to be limited by whatever device you have it plugged into. And with that little caveat out of the way, let's get back to the rest of the video. And that was the gaming headset from Vibe Gaming. In my opinion, it's not half bad for five bucks. The overall audio quality is pretty decent, though I admit the bass did seem a little bit hollow. It was there, but it was kind of lacking a kick. And to be perfectly honest, I don't know if I would rather have hollow bass or muddy bass. Either way though, the treble sounded just fine. As for the microphone, while there were a few issues, it did have a much better bass response than the microphone on a lot of other similarly priced gaming headsets that I've used in the past. 
and I definitely wouldn't mind listening to somebody in voice chat who was using a mic that sounded like that. Though you might want to think twice about using this mic as your primary mic if you're running a YouTube channel. If that's the case, you might want to spend an extra five bucks and pick up one of Five Below's new USB microphones. Though they did recently change the packaging, now it looks like this. And funnily enough, the packaging change actually addressed pretty much all of the complaints that I had about it in my review of said microphone. Which kind of makes me wonder, is somebody at Five Below Corporate watching my videos and taking notes? Or did I just happen to have the same critique as somebody in their art department? And while the latter option is indeed the most likely, if for some reason it happens to be the former, might I suggest putting a 60% membrane gaming keyboard on your shelves? It has the same wholesale price as all of the Booga gear, which means you can charge $10 for it and turn a profit, and I can practically guarantee that it would sell well. But enough joking around, all I really needed to say was that I definitely think this is worth the money. And it might even serve as a proper alternative to the UUSA gaming headset that Five Below has had for ages. Especially since somebody commented on one of my videos that the quality of the microphone used in the UUSA gaming headset has actually dropped since I posted that review. Now before I go, I want to know which one of the items I showed at the beginning of the video you would like to see in my next Five Below review, assuming I don't find anything ultra interesting between now and then. Would it be the gaming earbuds? the child safe gaming headset the updated headphone stand the updated mouse pad or the gaming monitor led strip light as you can see my review pile has gotten kind of deep and i have no idea where to focus next but anyway until next time this is your guy cly signing off